Okay, this is Stephen Everett, uh, and I am making a motion. I lost my Zoom here. Excuse I think me. I'm recording. Yeah, I don't see it. I, I know, yes, I just You're hit. recording, I see it. Okay. I see it. You're recording. Right, I see it too. Go, so, Steve. Yeah, all right. This is Stephen Everett, first selectman. I call to order the regular meeting of the Columbia Board of Selectmen on Tuesday, April 6th in the year 2021 at 7.02 p.m. So uh, our first order of business, rules of conduct for a virtual meeting. This is a web-based call, so we are operating under the following procedures. This session is being both video and audio recorded. Board members and staff will generally remain on mute except when speaking or voting and will generally be keeping the video of themselves on throughout the meeting. If a member of the public creates an audio or video disruption, they may be manually ejected from the meeting upon recommendation of staff or the first selection. For input, it should have been here 24 hours in advance on public input at columbiact.org. Uh, and during the meeting, should you have input or wish to make a comment, you can do so by raising your hand or submitting it through the chat during the audience of citizen, or if called upon as uh, to make comment over a subject. Uh, in both of these, you need to include your name and your address. In saying that, uh, I would now like to take a moment of silence to reflect on past and future. You're muted, Steve. Nope. Okay, thank you. So I make a motion that we uh, approve the agenda as published. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Even I vote yes. Um, approval of the minutes. Excuse me. Uh, Board of Selectmen, I make a motion we approve the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes for March 2nd, 2021. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor, Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lisa? Yes. This is Stephen. I vote yes. And I make a motion we approve the uh, Board of Selectmen special meeting minutes for March 10th, 2021. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lisa. Yes. Steve and I vote yes. Thank you. Audience of citizens, anybody? Any hands? Mike Lester, are you hoping to say something? Yes. Anybody see anything? Mark? Um, I'll look in chat. Hold on. Nothing in chat. Okay. I don't see anybody waving. We will have a second one at the end. So uh, thank you. And next is old business, the Zegda Farm Open Space Management Plan. Well, this came before us about a month ago or even longer. I asked you all to take a look at it. There's a lot of hard work in there. I will tell you that uh, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I and we met our, our grandkids over there, had a very nice walk through the place. It looks great. So, uh, um, and you have a part in this, you want to just summarize or just talk about it a little bit? Changes, yes. Um, I've had a great deal of input from the Sector Farm Management Committee, uh, the Open Space Committee, 
and the Conservation Ag Commission. I talked to a lot of people who have been involved with Sector Farm past and present. And um, I just took the old plan and updated it. I took out the goals that had already been achieved and, and I just took those out of the plan. Any new goals that we had, I added to it. Um, and uh, one of the biggest changes is when we started in 2007, uh, volunteers were doing almost all the work um, along with um, <clears throat> uh, any, any farmers leasing uh, parts of the farm. Uh, we're supposed to have a part in its maintenance. Well, that didn't work out too well. Um, uh, it, it wasn't a consistent, consistent and reliable source of mowing. Um, and there's a great deal of uh, field maintenance. Um, also, the volunteers that we had doing mowing, maintaining the whole place, um, had very poor equipment. It wasn't the correct equipment for the job. We were mowing, we were brush hogging, oh, let me back up, areas that should have been brush hogged once a year. Um, where the volunteers were trying to do it with a regular lawnmower. And you can't do that unless you do it once a week. So these volunteers were in some cases using their own equipment and damaging it. And um, it was a huge amount of work. So at some point we did, uh, the town did, have mercy on us and give us some um, hand-me-down mowers from DW, <coughs> and that helped a great deal. But again, it's not exactly the right piece of equipment. So, um, and all almost all of the volunteers have been aged out. Um, because, you know, we're, we're talking um, uh, 15 years of work here, and they've been so dedicated, um, and we're having a lot of trouble finding uh, new volunteers to take over for them. So in the management plan, um, uh, I, I put in that DPW would help us out. And I also decreased the number of times that the mowing would be completed. So in other words, the edges of fields, the fields that are not used for agriculture would be brush hot like once a year, once every other year but with the proper um, equipment that DPW has. Um, so those are the big changes. And, and I have a question based on your comments. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, I see it in here as one of the things I was looking at. Have you had discussions with the, uh, the director of public work director and how we are going to get the person power to be able to complete these mowings and the jobs you want done up there. Seems to me during the summer to mow up there once a week, we're taking another person uh, a day. Who just volunteer? No, it would be, DBW's part would be to use the roadside equipment, you know, the, the bar, 
that yes, we bar, clear yeah, the, the road bar. sites. And that would be once a year, November. We would still have volunteers. And Ooh. the volunteers, uh, like around the, um, the garden, the mm. community garden, those yes. volunteers would be doing the weekly kind of mowing. I would not expect UPW to do that part. Okay, but I also seen here where you would ask the DPW to do um, accessibility for handicapped and elderly, which is, I understand that. We want the garden to be used, especially if they're up there doing it, but it's uh, create a safe place for small children to play while the parents or grandparents are working in the garden. Um, have we talked to Department of Public Works and do we have a plan for such things? Yes, I think it's being enacted as a matter of fact. Steven. Millie's okay. heading that up and uh, she met with Beth and myself out there and we have a game plan. They're about to make it handicap accessible into the garden, I think next week. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions while we have Millie? Or excuse yeah. me, Dan here. I do have one. Do you have any um, plans to try to grow membership? Always. <laughs> it's hard to do. People are busy. It is, it is difficult to do. Um, it, it, it's hard to find people who, um, who take a vested interest in things. Um, and you know, they say, oh yeah, Zenda Farm's great. We'd like to take a hike there. But uh, it's mostly the community gardeners and the aging tree huggers who, um, who do things. Uh, you'll, you'll find Joan Hill over there. She is not on um, <clears throat> open space or conservation commission anymore, but she's still very active and she goes over there and does things, but, uh, you know, and, and there are other people. I, I have to thank Tom McGrath because he maintains a lot of places in Columbia. He does the root cellar. He's very active in uh, the mint preserve. He's very active at um, said farm open space. <clears throat> Thank you. Any more comments, questions? Mm -mm. So I make a motion that the uh, Board of Selectmen approve the 2021 updated Zegda Farm Open Space Management Plan as uh, written and changed here. Um, any comments? All those in favor, this is Steve and I vote yes. Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Thank, thank you very much, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next is the town codification project. Mark, you're on. I get a headache just thinking about it. Uh, this is something that we've been working on for, I think, at least eight years. And um, we finally got to a point where we can bring it to the Board of Selectmen. And then the next step is Board of Selectmen will motion it to a town meeting to adopt the codification of our ordinance book. So what that means is basically the previous ordinances, some were on selectric typewriter fonts. They were all over the place. The um, formatting was never exactly the same over, you know, a hundred years of doing ordinances. So this is up to date. All fonts are the same. All formats are the same. There's a beginning of this that tells all the changes that were made. Uh, these changes were mostly made by myself, the town clerk, and the assistant town clerk, and the department heads. Um, and anytime I had to run something by Stephen or 
anybody's like um, Trooper DeCarly, I did that. So you can see a full review of all the modifications and it was also updated. So it was consistent with state statutes. And um, the next challenge is for you to review what we did and approve it. And then we'll, it'll be posted on our website and a hard copy will be available in the town clerk's office for any resident that wants to either see hard copy or go online and look at it. So Mark, why don't you explain to us how you made it easier so we could see the changes that were made. So when you, when you go through it, um, there's an explanation in the proposed code of adoption ordinances that gives a summary. And then also our town attorney has reviewed all these, but you can see what was changed, what was crossed out, um, what was amended. And it'll say, you know, it'll give the original subsection and then uh, you can see the new adoption in when you go into the ordinance. So you have to go back and forth. But you'll, you'll be able to see where we've come in and corrected things that were out, outdated. Okay. Hey, Mike Lester, any, while well, you're taking that call, can you mute your computer or your... Okay, so basically our charge is to take a look at this, read it over, uh, and when do you want to, when are we bringing it back up in two weeks or what? I, you might need more than two weeks. Why don't we get through the budget process? Okay. And then um, we'll set a date to look at it again. All right, very good. Yes, so yes Steve. Any questions? Who asked a question? No, I think Mike Lester was telling you he... He'd mute. Yeah, okay. All right. No questions on that? All right, we have homework. When you can't sleep. Uh, new business. Approval of the change of carrier and plan for the town health care benefits. Uh, you know, I know that Mark put a lot of work into this. He was one of the stalwarts of the CT chip. And... Uh, honest with you, it was good for the first year and then reality kind of hit. And then, so we've got an alternative and um, Mark, you want to run through it for us? Yes, um, when, when one of our main, our largest towns backed out of the consortium, um, it forced us, the costs went up even more uh, with Cigna as we went below 600 insured lives amongst all the towns. So we all decided to go out for, it. and um, Anthem was the winner. And did both Anthem alone and Anthem through the state plan. And the state plan offered the best benefits to the employees. And um, with your approval, then I will uh, present this to our employees. And the Board of Ed is waiting for a final vote with their last union. Uh, to adopt it with their employees. So and what was the savings? 5%. Uh, so, so it was we're less than- level. The town itself is level. I don't know about the Board of Ed because uh, some additional peoples came on. Okay. So it's level. So we're not getting this 18% increase. Correct. You did a good job. <laughs> well, Beverly was a key component of this and our healthcare consultant, Joe Spurgeon helped direct and do all the bidding. Okay. And I don't know if Bev, Bev has anything to add. She certainly lived it with me. Uh, Mark, I'm re reading the motion here and it's to terminate our partner partnership with the CT chip, but we have to wait till we have to wait till the uh, vote and the approval for the um, for the school, but we're going to offer this to the town. Is that it? Yes, and actually, we'll still be part of CT Chip until July. Till it'll actually end June thirtieth. Okay. okay. All right. So I make a motion to approve that the town of Columbia terminate its partnership with CT Chip 
in health coverage offered through SIG as well as transition to the Connecticut State Partnership Plan and Anthem as the health insurance carrier for medical, vision, and dental benefits to eligible Town of Columbia staff and retirees effective July 1 in the year 2021. Any discussion? I have, so Mark, we should know uh, final numbers soon, but also it will depend on the school voting on it and accepting it. And uh, we don't need a vote from the town. We just believe it's the right thing to do, correct? You, you, de you need the motion you just made, you need to vote from the board of selectmen, not from the- Yes, board. yes, but this is what we've decided to offer for the, for the uh, employees of the town. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. all right. Any other questions? Hearing none, Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lisa? <laughs> yes. Steve and I vote yes. Thank you. Mark, uh, I appreciate your hard work on this. And well, I know it's lose sleep and health insurance is always a big question. So thank you. Okay. All right, we wanna talk a little bit about uh, new business more in 7.2, recommended revisions from the Board of Selectmen to FIPAC, is that correct, Mark? Yes. Right. So we knew that there was gonna be fluctuation in the numbers. Certainly the insurance of an 18, 19% increase uh, that we sent to FIPAC off our budget has now turned into hopefully a level um, move from last year to next year. So that saves money. And we need to look at some of the other things that we want to um, pass through for revision of five pack off of our budget. So Mark, you have a list there. Mark and I have talked about this. We've talked to the different department heads. We've talked to elected officials throughout the state and Congressman Courtney's office I ask you to bear with us, jot some notes down. If you have some questions, we'll do the best we can to answer them. But we believe that this is probably the uh, safest and the most physically prudent way to go. It's not a done deal. Ask us questions and we'll tell you why we came up with it. And uh, we'd love to hear your comments. So Mark, you're up. So the biggest change that we just, approved is um, the operating reduction for health insurance. So on the town side, which is what we're in charge of, there's a $66,760 reduction in our operating budget. That we sent to FIPAC? No, we have not sent that full reduction yet. That'll be our recommendation to modify the budget in the FIPAC meeting tomorrow night. Thank you. So Bev is rerunning the budget documents to incorporate that change. And she has sent those out to you tonight, um, this afternoon. So you, you can see that. Um, and then the other big modifications that I, I'd like to propose that the board discuss is knocking out uh, some of our capital projects, and I'm hoping the American Rescue Plan can cover, um, or if it doesn't, uh, those projects uh, may have to wait a year. Um, or the third option is to go back to a town meeting later once we understand what all the rules and regulations are for the American Rescue Plan funding, then we could always go back to a town meeting if we needed some more additional funds on a project. But I went through these, um, Steve and I have been talking, I went through with Bev, and right now I'm, I'm hoping the rescue plan is going to really promote outdoor activities that are the safest during the downside of a pandemic. So we cut out 188,000 from the rec park capital and 15,000 for the scoreboard. And then DPW equipment, the mower, um, we've had a lot of discussion on mowers lately. Uh, you'll see later in a transfer, uh, we 
had to purchase a mower for the Zegda farm. And that's because we did not have an extra mower. And until we buy a new mower, there won't be an extra one for Zegda farm since theirs burned up and died due to its age. Um, and also we calculated that the cost of hiring someone to mow, if we didn't supply our volunteers with a mower would equal the cost of the mower over between now and when a mower could be purchased uh, at the end of the summer. So right now we took out the mower because um, through more analysis, we realized that the 11.5 might not be enough for the width of the mower we want for Rec Park and American Rescue Plan might provide funding for a mower when we try to go for improvements in the Rec Park. I don't know yet, but right now we pulled that out and we're hoping the forklifts for the loader that we can buy them from existing funds and do a transfer in our budget we're in right now. So we pulled that out. Uh, I pulled out the additional 10,000 to refill the HVAC fund. I'm hoping because it looks like American Rescue wants us to do a lot of uh, improvements to air handling in our buildings that we might be able to get HVAC money. So I pulled that out of the budget, pulled out some engineering and in um, two places, because we do have 17,000 in our engineering budget, which I'm hoping will be enough to carry us. And I pulled out the senior center gen generator. We're, we're trying to um, purchase that through a Congressman Courtney uh, grant that we're writing up right now. And the volunteer fire department, we pulled the SUV out at the moment. Uh, there might be more discussion with FIPAC or even with the Board of Selectmen on uh, whether you want any money from the, S from the rescue truck pulled out of the budget because we are applying to Congress Portney for funding for the rescue truck. It's just a question of strategy on how much funding. Uh, they were saying most of the grants, Congress and Courtney can give out 10 grants to you know 10 towns and they're going to average being a hundred and 150,000. Some might be more than that. So right now um, we have 470, almost 75,000 and this uh, rescue trust is going to cost 710,000 if that's the truck chosen by the volunteer fire department on the 12th of this month, they're going to vote. So they have two proposals. Um, the seven 110,000 was the lower proposal. So the SUV is di is that different than what? Cause that's what you're taking out 50,000. That's different than the fire truck you're talking about. Yes. So the SUV is a transportation vehicle for right. transporting firefighters to fires and to training. Great. Steve mentioned in the beginning that um, department heads have been spoken with I see here tonight that we have several members of the fire department here. Are, are they on board with this cut or where do we stand as far as they're concerned? Um, I, I'm happy to have them speak. What they had mentioned to me was that if something had to be cut, they would rather the SUV put on hold than to mess with the rescue truck. Hi, uh, Bill, to your, to your point, this is Tom Doyle speaking. Um, the, the rescue truck has been a multi-year um, allocation on the part of the town, which we're very, appreci very appreciative of. Um, th that vehicle is, is nearing a, a reasonable end of life. And we did defer the final allocation payment from last year. And it, it's every year that you defer the acquisition of a piece of fire apparatus, obviously costs go up regulations may change things of that nature. Um, if, if we had to, the 50,000 for that uh, command vehicle, uh, the, the idea was it was a combination command vehicle. It's not like we're just trying to buy an SUV for driving around town. Uh, we, we currently have a um, rather large pickup truck, which was designed for a trailer we no longer have. Um, it was a transport vehicle, but the capital acquisition of the rescue truck is, is something that is extremely important to our life safety capabilities. So the ability to respond to motor vehicle accidents or anything else requires the capability of, of that uh, piece of apparatus. 
And um, we have been incurring a number of repair bills. Um, and, and so we would like to, if, if it's only the dropping of the command vehicle, then understanding that uh, the town's financial situation is in, in that kind of circumstance, then yes, uh, the dropping of the 50,000 would be okay, but we do need that allocation to allow us to acquire the rescue truck. Thank you. Thank you. Now at Rec Park, so you're taking away most of the funding to complete Rec Park, correct? Correct, well complete this year's projects for Rec Park. There's still more to follow in subsequent years. Right. So June, so, let, me, let me throw in here to kind of clear up a few of these things. These, these uh, reductions in the capital projects were not taken lightly. We took a look at the, the stimulus package, the American Rescue Plan, and there is a certain amount of money that is coming to all towns and cities across the country. And Columbia is in line to get funding. So the other thing is we've been contacted by Joe Courtney's office, by uh, Senator Austin's office and said, listen, there's grants available, get, get your wishes in there. And when you looked at the paperwork and you asked the questions, although it is not uh, etched in stone, the descriptions and stuff, in there you can find the words that relate to welfare, safety, um, and morale and recreation type of things. It says in there, emergency vehicles, you can go for grants. It says in there, you know, uh, I've been talked to uh, the governor's office about air purification right. and, you know, health and welfare for our students and for our seniors and stuff. So I, I'm, I'm I feel good about pulling out some of these things that if we get the grants, that's wonderful. But I also feel good about the dollar amounts that they're projected that a town like Columbia will get. We will be able to use that money to cover a majority of these items that we're pulling out of the capital. And if we have them all funded, we may not be able to use that grant money as it's proposed to be used so either you use it on something that we really don't need or desire or lose it or whatever. I hate to guess, but too many years in the military, it was use it or lose it. And you, you purchase things that weren't necessary because right. you were always worried about your funding going down. Right. Yeah, I, I heard you can't, the money can't be used to reduce your mill rate. So if Correct. we've already put money into it, then you can't use it for that. Um, yeah, exactly. and I did read, what does it say, community projects, which could be Rec Park. I mean, it was, right. yeah, my interpretation, but. So, I, yeah. I, I was up there today and there, it's very busy. I was, I was amazed how many people were up there today. It's such a nice day. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of gambling here, but I feel pretty good that either we don't get the, if we get the grants, that's great. We have money from that and the stimulus to right. use other things in town. And if we don't get the grants, there's a number of dollars in the rescue plan that we're projected to get that I think will cover most of these projects anyway. So okay, that's my recommendation. I think this is the way to go. We've had a lot of discussion with everybody's office they're probably tired of hearing from us because they're getting the same questions from a lot of different places. Right. But we're finally getting a little bit more of the ink saying safety, vehicles, habitability, you know, welfare, that type of thing. So right. that's why we're that's why we're making the moves we're we're talk, we're um, recommending. I have a question for Tom, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, Tom, if if we do it the way we have it now and we leave the 125,000 in the budget for the rescue truck, that would leave 110,000 for the Courtney grant that may or may not happen or the 110,000 for the American Rescue Plan money that will happen, but we don't know if it will be allowed to be used towards a rescue truck. Uh, so that, that would leave the 110 to go back towards a town meeting at a later point to complete that project. 
But the question I have specifically is on the air packs. I know we have in the next two years, 125,000 each year for air packs. So 250,000 total over two years to replace all your air packs. Do you want that added to the Congressman Courtney request? So it would be for the rescue truck at 110 and 250 for air packs? It, in reading the documentation from the federal government documents, the ones that uh, we were provided today by Jennifer, th they have a word in there that says project, which to me implies a start to finish type of effort. The other thing is it says, um, have monies been allocated for it? And, and again, these are just piecemeal things because the, the documents are rather expansive in nature. Um, I, I'm just a little concerned about the rescue truck having been funded for a period of four prior fiscal years. Then there was a year where we deferred an allocation. I, I am not privy to understanding how the federal government would look at that. The, the concern I have is the way the rescue truck project was begun five years ago. The bottle project, on the other hand, is a brand new self-contained initiative. From that perspective, that 250, 249,000, that, that amount, that 250, that 125 and 125 is a self-contained project that would be applied towards public safety. If, I know it's kind of confusing, but that's how I feel as I read the documentation, they're looking for a project that would allow for a standalone $250,000 application to be one of Congressman Courtney's 10 projects. So in other words, we'd be presenting as a town to Courtney's office to bring forward a request for $250,000 of expenditure the town of Columbia needs for its firefighters to provide public safety. So if it's a standalone project, then the bottles, if you will, is a is a project that has no prior funds that have been allocated. That that's my only sticking point is we have four years of a project, if you will, that was funded by earlier money. If not, we're just applying for the incremental funds. I'd rather go for the 250 as a standalone project than the monies over and above the allocation we currently have for the rescue truck. Okay, so either we do two applications or um, count on the bottle since we have not contributed anything towards the air packs because you're supposed to have a like a um, contribution in there. We could we could apply for fifty percent of that if you will. I don't know if there's only ten right. projects. I don't know that Columbia can pick two. I, I honestly no, they won't. He'll pick. We're going to be applying for three to Congress and Courtney right now, and they'll pick one. Okay, and uh, again, if I had to pick a standalone project, now on the other hand, are you saying you want to apply for the full cost of the rescue truck? No, just for okay. what is left that is unfunded. Because what we'll explain is that by granting us this grant, you're allowing us to purchase a truck a year ahead of schedule because yeah. we still have one more payment that we have not achieved. And we need the rescue truck now because the old one is having electro problems. From an urgency standpoint, I agree. The rescue truck is the first thing we need done. The bottles, I don't want to say can wait. The bottles bottles are not as urgent as the rescue truck. We wanted to order the rescue truck last year. So however we go forward, mechanically with respect to getting funding as, as um, Mr. Everett mentioned, that's above my pay grade. I'm not sure how they'll be reimbursing things, but from the department standpoint, we need to replace that rescue truck. We've had a five-year plan in place. I'd like to maintain that process and if we want to put in multiple, yes, the bottle project is a second one. Okay, got it. So we'll just have to change that motion on 710, Stephen, and either make two motions, one for the rescue truck, one for the air packs, or just focus on the rescue truck. Okay. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Well, uh, my recommendation is put in a grant for each one of them. It gives us an opportunity to get one of them. 
Right. Do we know when they're going to be releasing uh, who's going to get the grants? Um, no. No idea. I mean, is it before May? Is it before June? Is this a three month thing? No clue? It's just hit us two weeks ago. So we've been scrambling. And it said they said that there's more there's more grants that are going to be coming down the road too. So this won't be the first time or the only time to apply for these. I know Jerry. I know uh, Jerry sent something in the chat. Said how much is Columbia getting? Uh, we're not sure, Jerry. Thank you. I just. Um, I am nervous about putting off the fire truck because if I recall, there were times when, you know, it's conked out on them and I wouldn't want that rescue truck. Um, it's but, the ability to get to a scene to put somebody at risk. But here's the deal. And this is the wording that Mark and I talked about. If we don't get the grant for the rescue truck, we go to a town meeting to pull it from the general fund. Yeah. That's you know, true. Um, yep. And I, I think I think people in the town would understand that. We tried. We funded it. We had a plan to fund it. We had an opportunity to get some help with funding it. Uh, it didn't come through. We still want to provide it. Uh, that was the plan. So I, I can't see. I understand. Think about it when we get to uh, 710. I'll, I'll get your inputs, okay? So it, this is not a motion, Stephen, but um, this document could be a recommendation for discussion with five. Okay. If yes. the board's all in agreement with about oh. a four hundred seven thousand dollar cut from what we proposed originally. Yeah. Um, so, Mark, do you have a summary of those cuts? And, and, and yes, you're going to get emailed um, this afternoon. Okay, I'll have to look. All right. What they look like in your email. Oh, just like that. Okay, good. Thank you. I'll have to look for them. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. So now the approval of the budget amendment, we're not doing that then? All right. So, so I need a motion to say these are the recommendations or just... Any, everybody okay with the recommendations we're sending to five pack? You want a consensus versus a motion? I say consensus, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with setting this to a five pack as presented. Thank you. Judy? I am also. Yes, I am too. Rob? Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, so it's a five zip, you know, we, uh, that's a consensus. Thank you. Um, Next, 7.4, Beth Lunt has been with us more six months already, and we're, we're doing great. I think we're getting a lot of good comments and everything. So it's my pleasure to make a motion to grant permanent status for Beth Lunt, Director of Public Works, as an employee of the Town of Columbia. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, Lisa? Yes. Bill? Yes. Judy? Yes. Rob? Yes. Steve and I vote yes. Thank you. Uh, 7.5. Jason Noasad. Um, well, again, quick six months for facilities manager. And it's also my pleasure to make a motion to grant permanent status for Jason Noasad, facilities manager as an employee of the town of Columbia. Um, any discussion? I'll start. You know, I I've heard great things and uh, when we tighten up a few of the different areas of our paperwork, I think when they get to Jason, he gets right on him. He, he does what he has to do to get the job done. He works well with Dan, our facilities uh, maintenance, and he also works well with Beth and, you know, things that are needed through the Department of Public Works. So uh, I'll start. I vote yes. Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 
Columbia Lions want to have a poker run and fundraiser on, on Sunday, April 25th, 2021. You want to? Well, they're all on, all on motorcycles, Mark. Is that it? Yes, it's a statewide fundraiser and we'll be just one of the stops. And you literally will swing into our fire station at the maintenance garage, uh, buy a poker card, and off you go. So it's so in two locations in town. No, I think it's just the fire station. Right, the so not, maintenance oh. garage, not the actual fire station. Okay. All right. So I make a motion we approve the Columbia Lions poker fundraiser. Uh, any discussion? No, uh, it, uh, just a question on liability. You know, does, do we need extra insurance for that? Or is it just, I mean, I think these things are great. I was just wondering on insurance. This, this is covered by their, nat, their, nat, their statewide organization. It's a statewide fundraiser, okay. so they'll be, they'll be covered. Yeah. Anybody else? All those in favor, Lisa? Yes. Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. I vote yes, Stephen, thank you. Okay, now it's the Steeplechase Bike Tour. They have that every year, except for last year, maybe, but um, Saturday, August 21st, 2021, and they run through a part of Columbia, correct? Correct. Any discussion on that? I make a motion that we approve the steeplechase bike tour through the town of Columbia as needed. Any discussion? Great, all those in favor, Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Even I vote yes. And here's another one. Rhode Island Mass Connecticut Relay, Saturday, August 28th, huh? year 2021. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the Rima Khan, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut Relay to run through portions of Columbia. Uh, the discussion, and I'll start as I did put our Board of Selectmen in as a team. <laughs> yeah, right. I, uh, I will buy the shirts. Everybody else pick out what portion of the state you want to run through. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, all these things are good. People want to get outside. God bless them. So we're yep. okay with you. All oh, those yeah. in favor. Bill. Yes. Judy. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Rob. Yes. And this is Steve and I vote yes. And they, we needed six people for a team. So uh, Beverly Cirillo is going to help us. All right, Bev. <laughs> All right. Take one okay. for the team. <laughs> so 7.9 is the Hop River Road Bridge endorsement. So this is the bridge over the Hop River that's going from a single lane to a dual lane. The funding is uh, federal and Columbia and Coventry, we basically know what it's all going to entail. They've come up with the, the, uh, the road and the curves and the on-ramps and the off-ramp to the bridge, where they want it to go. And they have assured me that it is in areas that are, um, they've looked at it, the sight lines are, are, are as best they're going to get. And it's over property that has been dug and redug, and they don't see any historical value. Is um, I'm kind of uh, what do they call that? Just kind of talking in generality of what they said. So they've asked us to endorse their uh, their plan, and their plan is ready to go. And if we don't endorse it, it will cost money and time to. It may cost money and time, but uh, they're very confident that this is the way they want it to go, and they're looking for us to. And Mark, you have any comment on anything else there? No, the real thing is uh, because of the area, you really can't get the normal curve and stopping distance you would at a, a bridge that doesn't end right into someone's house almost. So you, you, but they feel the road is so curved and traffic speeding is not an issue that having 200 feet of stopping sight distance 
is sufficient. They would prefer to have 275, but to get 275, you'd have to do all sorts of eminent domain and change the street quite a bit. Um, and also the curve radius of the bridge is slightly out of standard spec, but they feel it's a great compromise. And Coventry and their town engineer is um, on board as well. So the legal traffic authority has to make a motion uh, so they could go forward with completing the design. And they will open as a, uh, I make a motion as the legal traffic authority and the board of select for the town of Columbia we endorse the advancing project number 32-150 with a curve radius and stopping site distance that is substandard for new construction slash major reconstruction projects. Um, so that's the motion, but Mark, we can't put anything there that's been put forth by the state traffic authority or state engineering traffic engineering authority. Um, it's not the state, it's the um, oh, federal firm, Close, Jensen, and Miller. That it's, it's per their design recommendations, if you want to add that. That's what I want to add. Per the design recommendations of Close, Jensen, and Miller, comma, PC, bridge engineer. How long will it take to complete it? Uh, I'd say you're looking at at least another year and a half. Okay. Any other questions? Yep. The, the, the stopping distance issues, um, is the proposed uh, change uh, safe? I'm concerned about the language that we're approving something that is substandard. Um, and the problem is you can't get standard in this location. You'd have to move the bridge and that would make it instead of a three point $3 million project. I, I have no idea it would be huge. You'd have to change the entire bridge. I guess the question that I would have is currently, if you go down, there's stop signs, which kind of control that situation. I, do they have some idea of, of mitigating some of the substandard issues? Something like a stop sign just to slow traffic. Well, I believe they're going to have uh, like an S curve type of signs down there. It, it, you know, it is, the curve is not really changing. Um, well, my, cause the bridge is being, the bridge is moving a little, right, Mark? Right. The bridge is actually getting its own curve instead of ending as a one way bridge into a complete stop. The bridge, if you look at the diagram has a slight curve now to it. So you can mm -hmm. just, you can just keep going. It's a two-way bridge now. It's no longer a stop. So, I would, I guess that would beg the question: Why are they concerned with stop distance? I guess my only concern is 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 uh, Close Jensen Miller pushing off their mistake onto us. Well, this is. They, they presented to the committee, which was both towns and different ideas. And this was the best compromise of how to fix this bridge. Let's see. Well, the only better better way better. would be to really curve it quite a bit and change where it goes over the river. And that, that would be a huge expense. Yeah, I'm just concerned about potential liability down the road if we're approving a substandard plan. We're acknowledging up front at the time of approval that it's substandard and then approving it. <clears throat> so couldn't we as the traffic authority, if we want to put a stop sign in? You got two towns, that's the only issue there. Well, we could put it on our side of the bridge, I'm just saying. Sure. And there must be a stop sign somewhere or they wouldn't be concerned about sight distance to the stop sign. Or toll booth. <laughs> that would stop them. There you go. <laughs> they wouldn't go over the bridge. <laughs> I'd say that I'll be very involved and make sure it's as safe as possible. So Mark, I have a question. If I amended, I don't know, is this, this motion that you had me read, did that come from an attorney or something? No, well, it came from 
um, what they forwarded as a requirement to keep going with the design. Yeah, okay. So I mean, taking what Bill said, what if we say with, with a curb radius and stopping site distance um, approved and engineered by the company, blah, 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 for new construction and major construction project. And That's took fine. out the substandard. I'm fine with that. That's good. That, that allowed additional defendants. <laughs> so you just, you get rid That's of the language cool. substandard and put in <laughs> that we, we approved the design of Close Jensen and Miller. Now they're the engineers. Yeah, that, that's better because I don't like the idea. It's, you know, it looks like they're pushing. You know, it's great. You do something, you design something, you have someone else liable for it. Right. Um, I, I don't think we're. I don't think we're really. Uh, sure. I don't know if we're in harm or we're protected either way, but I like that better. Taking substandard out of there. Okay. That's Jen, good. do you have the amendment or my my uh, revision? Yes. Great. Any more discussion? No. Nope. All, all those in favor? Bill. Yes. <laughs> okay. We're all good. Rob. Yes. <laughs> Judy. Yes. Lisa. Yes. I'm going to vote no. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't want my. No, I vote yes. I'm just. <laughs> Just put your house in your wife's name. Yeah, <laughs> I vote yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, so, all right, so 7 10. Mark, I think I'm going to ask us to put a motion in for as uh, separately for both of these the rescue truck and the air packs. Um, and then if they if they get these done before the budget uh, vote, that's great. And they give us money for the rescue truck. And if they don't, and, you know, five pack, we talk to five pack and uh, we say, listen, we need to keep the rescue truck in, or we need to take it out with the understanding that if we don't get a grant, we're giving it to them through the general fund. We need the truck. Right that's now, five pack. Right now, our budget that we're gonna to talk to FIPAC tomorrow about still has 125,000 for the rest of the truck. The grant request will be for the 110,000 remaining that we don't have. Perfect, that's fine with me. All right, so I make a motion to apply for rural development, rural community facilities grants, fiscal year 2021, funding for the Columbia Volunteer Fire Department rescue truck. I'm not gonna put it in, do I need an amount of 125, 110,000? No. Okay. Well, well, that'll be in the grant application. All right. Uh, any any more discussion on that? All those in favor? Rob? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Steve and I vote yes. Thank you. Motion to apply for rural development, rural community facilities grants, fiscal year 2021 funding for the Columbia Volunteer Fire Department air packs. So this is the 250,000 that we need to, uh, they have a life of about 10 years, I guess, and they're due up. So any more discussion on that? No, and I just ask um, Tom and Steve to, to try to get me language because I'll have to have this completed tomorrow as to why air packs are critical. We'll, 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 we'll give you a call first thing in the morning. Perfect, thank you, Tom. Why well, air packs are critical? Well, we know why they're critical. All those in favor. Fire, firefighters like to breathe, Steve. It's yeah. a very good idea I, to breathe. I know. It seemed pretty <laughs> simple to me, but uh, <laughs> all those in favor, Lisa? Yes. Bill? Yes. Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. I vote yes, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, so that's that one. So I make a motion to apply for a rural development, rural community facilities grant, fiscal year 2021 funding for the HVAC generator and solar carport for the Beckish Senior Center. We're rolling them all into one. Um, all right, discussion. All those in favor, Judy? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Bill? Yes. 
Rob? Yes. Steve and I vote yes. Thank you. A motion to apply for the De Department of Housing and Urban Development Initiative. Fiscal year 2021 for the Moores Indian Charity Schoolhouse Museum Historic Rehabilitation. Uh, this is for the interior to be able to go in there and restore that. And there may be some, we have to look at the painting in there to see if it's lead painting. So we're putting in for a grant for that through the uh, Housing and Urban Development Initiative. So any discussion? Great idea. All those in favor, Rob? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Bill? Yes. Judy? Yes. Steve and I vote yes, thank you. All right, nothing on the Columbia Lake, it is rising, wonderful, nothing on appointments. Town Administrator's Report. So I just want everybody to be aware we've um, hired John Cirillo uh, as our third transfer station attendant to help out. Uh, he had some time uh, where he could help us at this moment and um, he's doing a great job. And also we closed on the Bell Robinson property um, within Wells Woods, which is now the Monopon State Park. And Rob said he could actually deliver the Mylars and um, wrap that all up. So thank you, Rob, for all your help on that. And for everyone's assistant to expedite that through our, our process. And uh, Belle was so cute. She, she was really on top of it. She's very, very uh, sharp woman. What told, reminded us that we forgot to give her the thousand dollar deposit that we should have in the beginning of the process. So she got the full full check at the end. And um, we're creating a, or the historic society is creating a history video of Columbia uh, through the help of um, we've contracted with John. What's John's last name, Judy? Pyers. Pyers. And uh, Stephen had talked about in the beginning of the board select meeting that um, this is evolving and it's going to try to document um, more about the lake and the history of Columbia. And uh, different people might be interviewed. Yeah, starting from Columbia Crank, it's, you know, the revolution, talk about the revolution and how we got our name, Columbia. Um, and the different mills in town um, and, and up to the present. It's kind of fascinating. Bill all helped us to look at the contract to make sure it was appropriate. So I thank him for that. Um, and we may know, Steve's been asked to be interviewed. We're going around interviewing people. Ann Dunnick did a great job. She was interviewed last week. And so some, some other people may be called. We we're thinking, I was thinking something to show how the current Board of Selectmen functions. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that play, how, how far we're getting. You're interviewed for an hour and maybe 30 seconds or a minute is gonna be shown in the, in the video. But it's kind of, I think it's kind of cool. A lot of more work than I thought. Thank you. Uh, correspondence, a couple of uh, nice articles in there. Just, uh, I would just note in the um, Connecticut State Police report that over the last couple months, we've had eight accidents, which is, and wow. there was a big write up in the paper on suicide six and the challenges of Route Six, but our accidents tend to focus on 66 and 87. Um, so I've asked Trooper DeCarly too, Stephen, to review with Beth and the DOT. Um, where's the best place for these new digital speed signs we have. And maybe they should go at our biggest intersection problems near Hunt and Pine or, or um, Hennigan. Yep, okay. I'll, I'll report back on that. Yep, very good. And let's see, budgets and transfers. So we do have some transfers that we talked about. Um, I make a motion that we transfer $220 from transportation to postage to cover the cost of uh, um, 
of voters, registrar voters mailings that they need to do. Um, that's in the same line. Yep. But same department, different line. Okay. So that's $220. Make a motion that uh, also in this motion to cover $5,900 to cover the cost for budget for gasoline used by the facilities truck, as well as cost for um, technical budget for technical services for the town building maintenance and repairs and to add some as a buffer to that current line about 2500 of that is a buffer correct Bev just nod your head wonderful um, also a transfer of funds from $1,110 in the maintenance grotto fire department for fuel to cover the above budget of electricity usage in the old maintenance or the maintenance garage, the old fire department, and unused funds from the maintenance garage heating oil budget, and unused funds from the chapel electricity budget. So that's where the funds are coming from to go to the maintenance garage electrical use. Uh, and the last one, $834 from to cover the outside cost of the budget to purchase a new lawnmower for Zegda Farm property. They already had the $3,000 in their funding. They needed 834 and we're taking that from contracted services and moving it to the repairs and maintenance line. So those are the trends. Uh, clarification. Did we do the $1,000 transfer? No, he missed that one. Oh, where's that one? The third one, right in the middle. Professional dues, the fuel. Oh, okay. Also, for the building official facilities, a thousand dollars to cover the cost for the above budget for heating oil at the town hall. The transfers to cover the current deficit as well as to cover heating costs until the end of the fiscal year. Transferring funds from the admin professional dues was has an excess funds due to a PERMA membership rebate issued this year. So. We seem to find where we have a little bit of extra to move where we need it, and that does a good job. So in total, transfer of $9,064, correct? Bev? Yes. Wonderful. Any discussion? All those in favor? This is Steve and I vote yes. Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. And Lisa? Yes. All right, what do we have? Refunds, we have refunds, yep. And make a motion, we pay refunds in the amount of $290.34 to the respective names or businesses listed above. So basically there just seem to be some overcharges on some vehicles and stuff. Right. Some excess payments, so. $290.34. Any discussion? All those in favor, Judy? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Bill? Yes. Rob? Yes. Steve and I vote yes. We have no uh, no bills to pay? Nah. Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> I wish. Yeah. I missed them. them. Your packet didn't have them, Stephen. All right. Rob, you're up. Okay. I move that we uh, paid bills in the amount of $261,801.63, which is includes the 2021 emergency funds, regular funds, credit cards, paycheck. Um, any comments? I had a couple little questions. One was, um, what's all the microfilm for? All sorts of charges on microfilm. Michael Fish, is that for um, the tax department? Town clerk. It town passes. clerk? Yes, town, yeah, it's town clerk. They're microfishing their records, I guess, and storing them. Okay, that's what I figured. I just was confirming that. And how are we doing on the attorney budget? Because I noticed a whole bunch of charges there. Legal oh, fees. We're way, we're way under. There's probably okay. going to be at least 20 or so thousand. Um, we're good. Going back to the general fund. I was just okay. curious. Thank we you. Keep the calls very short. 
<laughs> good job. Right. That's re that's really good. In the past, that used to be an over budget thing. That's really good. But we're not suing anybody at the moment. <laughs> Keep our fingers crossed, right? Shh. Any more comments? Mm -mm. All those in favor of paying the bills? Rob? Yes. Judy? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Bill? Yes. Okay, this is Steven. I vote yes. All right. Um, what do we got? Audience or citizen? Is that it? Right. Audience or citizen? Anybody with a hand up, Mark? Um, hold on, I'll look in chat. Chat. Um, what happens to the parking area and rails trail at the bridge? Um, Ann Dunnick asks, what will happen to the parking area for the rail trail at the bridge? That parking area won't be affected. I can't say that while they're rebuilding the bridge, they might use it for storing all their things because the bridge will be closed for, for the whole time. So you might have to get to the parking through Coventry. There's other places to park along that same trail. It's just nice up there, but yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Jerry James asked the dollar amount that Columbia is supposed to get. It, it might be up in the American Rescue Plan up as much as a total of almost $2 million. We're not sure. But we, don't, we don't know. We just know the town should get 504, the school 204, and we get a per capita portion of our Tolling County money, which we're not, we haven't seen a written dollar amount to that yet. Yeah. Nothing else? Board member comments. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I know that the, um, you, it's hard, you work on the budget, is, it takes a, takes a while, but I would, would appreciate it if we can get the budget documents in the morning, like it, at the latest on Tuesday morning when I'm picking up the packet, just makes it harder just to look at the stuff on the computer. So if we could get that early in the morning, I, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay. Anybody else? I thank you all for your time and your understanding and the fact that you're still here week after week. So I appreciate it. And saying that, I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Eight fourteen. Take Love care. It. Have a good rest of the week. Thank you Take all. Care all. Enjoy Bye. yourself. Dave.